around my story. Every one of us has a talent. It may be singing beautifully, drawing artistically, writing poetically. We're all different. Our special talents make us happy. We are all unique in our own way, living in a world full of peace, love, and happiness. But what if our talent became our bane? Well, my talent did become my bane. Let me tell you how. My name is Jenny, and I'm 16 years old. I lived in a quiet neighborhood with my parents and my little brother Matthew. I didn't have a lot of friends or hobbies. I was only interested in social media, but I always had a feeling that I had something unique, something that distinguished me from others. Turned out, I was right. It all started on my grandmother's birthday. My family and I were traveling to her home to celebrate the occasion. The road was narrow and bumpy, with a rocky shoulder on one side and a river on the other. Dad was driving too fast, so obviously, Mom was a bit worried. Conversely, Matthew was excited. It was raining so hard that day that Dad feared the weather might get even worse, so he was driving faster than he should have to try to arrive at Grandma's house quickly. I was worried too, but for a slightly different reason. I had a feeling of impending doom on that trip. The rain got progressively worse. There was almost continuous lightning and thunder. Suddenly, we saw a big truck that had stopped on the road ahead of us. Mom screamed. Dad swerved to avoid hitting the truck and lost control of the car, which had gone on one of its sides and off the road into the river. It was the most frightening situation I had ever experienced in my whole life. We went underwater, and I felt as if we were in an aquarium. Dad was unconscious, and his forehead was bleeding. Mom was struggling, and Matthew was paralyzed with fear his eyes tightly shut. Then, my vision went dark. When I woke up, I found myself in a hospital bed, with a team of doctors around me. When I asked them about my family, the look on their faces told me that I was the sole survivor of that horrible accident. Several days had passed since the accident. I was having trouble sleeping. The doctors gave me some sleeping pills. They even tried hypnosis to help me sleep. Grandma came to visit me. She was very sad. She said I could come live with her. My whole life was turned upside down in an instant. A police officer at the hospital was kind enough to drive Grandma and I to her home. After he dropped us off, something strange happened. In a fraction of a second, I had a vision, a momentary premonition that something bad was going to happen to him. I saw him trying to catch a thief and suddenly crashing into another car. So I thanked him for the ride and told him to take care of himself, to be very careful. He smiled and said that he will. The very next day, as I was watching the news, I saw a report that that very same kind officer had died in a car crash, just like my premonition. Grandma was upset when I told her what had happened. I didn't tell her that I had foreseen his death because I knew that she wouldn't believe me. In fact, she might have even thought I was crazy. This strange turn of events happened again with one of our neighbors who visited us one day. She was a kind, lovely woman. I had a premonition that she would die in her kitchen due to a gas line explosion. I urged her to be careful with the cooking gas because it could be so dangerous. But she just laughed and said that she loved cooking and that there is nothing to fear. Grandma got a bit upset with me for making a big deal out of nothing. She said that I was just a little paranoid due to the accident and that my imagination was getting way too overactive and that I shouldn't try to scare people. Needless to say... The neighbor that I had warned did indeed die in a gas line explosion four days later. Coincidence? I think not. Am I somehow causing these incidents to happen? I couldn't help but think that I was somehow linked to the whole thing. I searched the internet for any information about this phenomena, and I found that it was common in people who had been involved in a traumatic experience, especially almost drowning incidents. I read a research that said, that parts of the subject's brain would become very active. After our neighbor's accident, my aunt and uncle came to visit us. I had missed them a lot, but, yet again, I had a premonition that they would have an accident going home, causing their car to explode and crash into the river. Two days later, they were preparing to leave and head home. I begged them to stay one more night, but they said that they couldn't because they had work the next day. I told Grandma about my premonition, and she scolded me told me to stop this nonsense. She thought it was my overactive imagination again. My uncle came in as grandma was scolding me and asked me what was wrong. 
I wanted to say, nothing important, uncle. Just premonitions of doom, that's all. But I didn't. I went to sleep instead, and had a dream. That uncle was going to get run over by a car. Suddenly, I woke up to the sound of uncle and grandma's voices. They were talking about me, and it was raining outside. Uncle stood up, and said that he had to get something from his car. I sat up straight and shouted, No! Don't go! Uncle said, Jenny, it'll be fine. I'll just get something from the car. I couldn't dissuade him from going, so I followed him out. Uncle went out to his car and was standing by its door, which was facing the road. Then, I saw the headlights. A car was coming down the road, driving towards us. I saw the car hit a flooded spot on the road, and suddenly began sliding sideways, right towards Uncle. Instinctively, I made a decision, to try and protect him. I had to at least try. I jumped in front of the swerving car. The driver saw me, and tried to regain control. Suddenly, I felt a warm sunshine, mysteriously coming down from the sky, amidst the rain, and I felt calm and safe. And I had one final premonition, before everything went dark. It all happened on my last holiday. It was a terrible experience. It was the worst holiday I have ever had. Me and my friend Renee, we decided to go to New Zealand. We were saving money for a very long time to go on this trip. It was our dream to go to the land of the Lord of the Rings. We had made reservations for flight at the end of July. And from that moment on, everything went wrong. It turned out that the flight was reserved for only one person. Simply because a woman at the travel agency didn't understand us very well. I managed to reserve a flight, but a different one, so we couldn't go together. But I thought that it was not a big deal. My friend flew a few hours after me, I was going first. When I arrived at the airport, I was very happy because that meant that my holiday has just started and that nothing else could happen. And I was mistaken. When the hour of my flight was coming, I queued up to the custom clearance. My passport was right and the next thing I had to do was to go through the metal detector. When I was passing through, it started to beep. I was so scared. I was taken aside immediately. And I felt like a thief. It was terrible. The custom officer had taken me to another room and she told me to undress. I tried to explain that I had a belly ring and maybe it was the cause of the beeping but she didn't want to listen. I had to undress. They took my clothes somewhere else and I was standing alone in the middle of the room. I was shocked and stressed. The woman came back after about 5 minutes which seemed to be ages for me. She gave me back my clothes but I was not allowed to put them on. She checked me one more time with a small metal detector which was obviously beeping in front of my belly ring. Of course the custom officials went through all of my things but they didn't find anything. I was late for my flight so I had to wait for another one. My friend was supposed to meet me at the airport and it was me who should be waiting for her. She was terrified that I was not there. But fortunately, she decided to wait. After that horrible flight, we met at the airport and we went to our hostel. It turned out that we expected something different, but it was not that bad. And we were too tired to look for something else. New Zealand is the most beautiful country I have ever seen. And we loved everything about it. The people, their customs, their food, basically everything and the entire environment. We spent three weeks there. We had a really good time, but when the time ended we had to fly back home. I was a little bit scared. This time I decided to remove my belly ring. We came to the airport about three hours before the departure time. At the entrance to the airport we saw an older woman who had a large card with the word written on it with capital letters POLAND. So I came up to her and I started to speak in Polish. She smiled and we started to chat together. When we were just about to leave, she asked me if I could take a box of chocolates with me and give it to her son in Poland. He was supposed to meet me at the airport because she would phone him. And of course I agreed. And then it started again. At the custom clearance, everything was okay. I came through the metal detector and nothing happened. My passport was alright. I was almost free when the custom officer asked me about the chocolates. 
I said that it was given to me by the lady at the entrance and that her son is going to take it back at the airport in Poland. The custom officer asked me to open the box. I didn't want to agree as it was not mine. But I had to.